Good evening. This is evening prayer for Wednesday, the uh, 10th of June. And yeah, why do we have evening prayer? I just think before the night closes in on us, it's so good to have those intimate moments with God as we think about what our day has been like. Um, I'm mostly going to be using our Anglican prayer book, uh, so it's page 54, please, if you would. And um, But I'm going to add in some prayers from one of my favorite books. Um, it's actually called a Thousand, The Book of a Thousand Prayers, and it's a compilation of many prayers. So I'll be substituting some prayers, but I'll let you know about that when we get to it. So, in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. This is going to be one of the prayers that I will substitute today, and it's a, book, it's a prayer written by William Barclay. O oh God, our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for those who have given us guidance, counsel, advice, and good example. We thank you for those in whose company the still, sun still shone, even in the rain, and who brought a smile to our faces, even when things were grim. We thank you for those in whose company the frightening things were not so alarming and the hard things were not so difficult. We thank you for those whose presence saved us from falling into temptation and enabled us to do what is right. We thank you for those whom it is joy to be with and in whose company the hours pass all too quickly. We thank you for happy times to be to us forever happy memories. We thank you for times of failure to keep us humble and to make us remember how much we need you. Most of all, Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ, who in the daytime is our friend and our companion, and who in the night is our pillow and our peace. Hear this, our evening thanksgiving, for your love's sake. Amen. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ, so let us worship and praise him. We're going to go straight into a time of penitence, so if you would turn to page 56 with me in your prayer book, let's just take a moment or two and call to mind our sins. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought, word and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and keep us in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to go first of all to the psalm, which is Psalm 145. It is on page um, 786 of your prayer book, although I'll be reading it from the NIV Bible, Psalm 145. Won't you read it with me, please? I will exalt you, my God the King, I will praise your name for ever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name for ever and ever. Every day, every day I will praise you and extol your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I, will con and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all that he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. They tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak about your might. 
so that all people may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises, and faithful in all that he does. The Lord upholds all who fall, and lift up, lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. Your, uh, you open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and faithful in all that he does. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name for ever and ever. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be for ever. Amen. And now I'm going to go to the uh, scripture reading, the New Testament scripture reading for tonight, and it's taken from John's Gospel, chapter 6, and it begins at verse 27. Jesus, the bread of life. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his spirit of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What Sorry. What sign then will you give that what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that, is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to all of the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Hear the word of the Lord. Amen. A short reflection on what we have just heard in John's Gospel. What did Jesus mean when he said, I am the bread of life? First, we must consider the context. Jesus had just fed 5,000 people on the mountainside next to the Sea of Galilee. Were there 5,000, or was that just a metaphor for many people? We don't know. But whatever, this is the first of Jesus' I am statements, and each one communicates his identity. But there is a parallel here. Bread is synonymous with food, a staple item of diet. Physically, bread will keep a person alive. It will relieve their hunger. But when Jesus talks of being the bread of life, Jesus is talking in terms of spirituality. Jesus is the essential for life. Sorry, Jesus is essential for life. But the life Jesus is speaking of, the eternal life which he is speaking of, is really important to us. The phrase, I am, is a covenant name for God, Yahweh, which the Jews would never say because they felt that that was looking into the face of God. Theologians speak of this as a seity, an attribute only possessed by God 
a divine right. In using this term, the Jews will understand that Jesus, this as Jesus' claim to deity. My friends, Jesus is all we need for our existence. Bread perishes, but Jesus is the spiritual bread that brings eternal life. A simple phrase to join to that life is, Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. There is room in my heart for you. Amen. And now on page 58, let's say the song of Simeon together. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people, Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. And now we say together the baptismal creed, which you will find on the opposite page, that is page 59. I believe and trust in God the Father who made the world. I believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ, who redeemed humankind. I believe and trust in his Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God. I believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I think one of the most wonderful gifts that Jesus gave us was the prayer that he first taught his disciples. He said, this is the way we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Tomorrow is actually the uh, feast of the commemoration of Corpus Christi. Corpus Christi is to us, or in other terms, it is the Holy Communion. And so if you would turn with me to page 245, we'll say the collect for the commemoration of Holy Communion, the commem commemoration for the body of Christ. And we'll use the first collect. Almighty God, your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, gave us the wonderful sacrament of his body and blood for to represent his death and to celebrate his resurrection. Strengthen our devotion to him in these holy mysteries and through them renew our unity with him and with one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I'm going to turn back to my prayer book um, and I'm going to pray this prayer for today. Sorry, I got a little bit confused there. O oh God, our Creator, by whose mercy and might the world turns safely into darkness, and returns again to light. We give into your hands our unfinished tasks, our unsolved problems, and our unfulfilled hopes, knowing that only those things which you bless will prosper. To your great love and protection, we commit each other and all for whom we have prayed, knowing that you alone are our sure defender through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. That prayer is taken from the Book of Common Worship of the Church of South India and has been adapted. And now another prayer. This one is attributed to St. Augustine of Hippo. Watch, dear Lord, with those who wake or weep tonight, and let your angels protect those who sleep. Tend the sick, refresh the weary, sustain the dying, Calm the suffering, 
pity the distressed. And we ask all of this for your son's sake. Amen. And our prayer, which comes from the Office of Compline. Visit, Lord, we pray, this place, and drive far from it all the snares of the enemy. Let your holy angels dwell here to keep us in peace. And may your blessing be upon us evermore, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now yet another prayer, and this one is attributed to Reginald Heber. God that makes heaven and earth, darkness and light, who for the day toil has given, for rest the night, May thine angels guard and defend us. Slumber sweet, thy mercy send us. Holy dreams and hopes attend us this live long night. Amen. If we go back to our prayer book and at the bottom of page 61. Lighten our darkness, Lord, and by your great mercy defend us in all perils and dangers of the night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as always, we come together whenever we pray to underline what we have prayed for and what we have said with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. My friends, be safe, be blessed, until we meet again. Amen.